beginning of the slow. <laughs> All right, uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Russell Preston with Principal Group. Um, a lot of familiar faces here. Nice to see everyone again. Um, thank you for making some time on your on your busy agenda for our, our kind of update, our kind of uh, calling it a final presentation, but it's, you know, I think I'm really enjoying some discussion with you all, so I'm hopefully going to go through this pretty quickly and, and see if there's any questions or discussion. Um, but we've... Uh, you know, we were with you all not too long ago in this room and, and did a lot of work kind of in a frenzy of a couple of days. Uh, we've had some time to reflect on that and refine it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go quickly and take you through this. And please jump in if you've got a question. I think you know, this is meant to be really a, a conversation. Um, so you know, looking at the Village Center, um, we're a little delayed because of the Zoom. So I'm going to watch those monitors. Um, you know, we heard a lot of input, you know, and I'll go through that, that process a little bit, uh, just to remind everyone. Um, but the, the, the consensus is really that this is an auto-oriented place and that the community really wants to be a people-oriented place. Mm -hmm. I think that's sort of the overwhelming message, the overwhelming, you know, sort of conversations and kind of the, the, the trends that emerged from all of the input we had. And I think for anyone who might not have tried to walk this intersection recently, I would suggest you just go out and try that, you know, on a weekday or a weekend and see. And, and, and it's right. So it's, it's sort of a, a challenge here of how do we work together as a, as a local community and, and, and bring a, con, a plan to consensus so that we can work with the state agencies that are going to uh, be partners in, in fixing some of the situations out there today. Uh, like these, you know, it's seeing you know, many folks dash across fearing for their life. That's not the character you want to embody in your village. You know, a village is meant to be a place of community, not a place of fear. Um, so for us, you know, we've been doing this work for a very long time, and, and you know, I'm seeing really a trend emerging that, that Gray is, is, is part of, and it's this issue around pedestrian safety. And that that we have, um, over the last really 50 years, made slow modifications to our streets and the way they come into our village centers and into the centers of our neighborhoods and communities to the point where they've become dangerous uh, in a way that I don't think we ever intended. So I think what we're seeing now is a lot of communities kind of to roll back those choices and bring some context to the way that their streets are designed in and around their towns. So what you see in this chart is really that, you know, for us to be successful and take the fear away from people in the village, we've really got to see vehicles moving definitely below 30 miles per hour and ideally at 20 miles per hour. Um, so, you know, this is, you know, the data is, is sort of clear on this and, you know, there's been a lot of recent articles with the kind of uptick in pedestrian fatalities during the pandemic. So a lot of recent research over the last couple of years, a lot of dialogue around how do we kind of fix our streets and make them more friendly for the communities in which they're adjacent to. So I think everyone, we asked everyone this question during the design, uh, design days, and it's really, you know, it comes down to how, do, how does this serve your community? And, and, and do people gather in a village? They come together? Do they, you know, celebrate the, the the ongoings of the town in this place. And you know, right now, it's a bit of an adjacency problem with the freeway. And I think that's part of how we have to unravel this. And that became very clear in all of the discussions we had um, you know, over all of these various meetings and interactions. And, and you know, this, you know, I really have to say, it was a pleasure to have everyone come out during a summer sort of event like this. You know, normally, prior to COVID, we probably would not have done that. but. Yeah, I think it was a testament to those who helped us plan this and the, and the folks locally who, who really volunteered their time that this is a really serious issue for your community, enough so that they're willing to, you know, slough off a Saturday and come hang out with us and talk about streets. So I think that's a testament to really the, the, the charge here for, for you as leaders and, and for the community to, to really recognize this is an important effort and a, and a timely one. Um, you know, this, you know, we've done a lot of site walks with, with communities and, and 
I think you know, it's just telling to go out there and see this uh, with the folks who have lived in town for so long. And it's part of, you know, we think about streets and, and how to great, create great places every day, but to be able to educate some of the folks in your community about little, really the little details that could change to really affect, effectively improve this was, was, uh, uh, was a lot of fun. So again, thank you everyone for coming. But I, I think it's, you know, the input, um, you know, this is meant to be a little bit funny, but also a little bit not funny. Um, you know, a lot of the input what was pretty clear about the character of, of the, the, the center of the village and that it's not, not good. Um, you know, so I think that's what I'm here to really empower you all to do is to make some of those changes and take advantage of the opportunities you have with where the right of ways, the, 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 the space and land that you control in the common, and that is the town, really has custody over. And I think this is a challenge with how to work with the state and how to, you know, how to really think uh, holistically about this land that um, right now is very much uh, serving the needs of trucks and, and of vehicles coming through and, and not necessarily staying and spending time in your village. Um, so we think you know, overall the, the plan here is really emerging to make sure the streets support community um, and it's really, you know, I think everything we've kind of weaved into these designs is, is kind of trying to serve that. And, you know, just to remind folks, when we do these visual preference surveys, it's really about how a picture is really worth a thousand words. And I think this picture is also worth a thousand words, too. There's sort of this idea of how your community reacted to these, these photos is, it, it emerged that you had a lot of consensus already just by looking at the, the pictures. So now I think it's our jobs and the jobs of the other professionals that are gonna to need to get involved to, to make sure what results looks like these pictures um, and really is, is creates that postcard of the future uh, for the village here in Gray. Now, what, what we find is that these sort of downtown conditions, these village centers, they're very complicated and complex. You, know, you have existing businesses, you have existing stakeholders, existing residents. Now, how do we fold them all into the, the process? And what we hope has happened is that everyone sees a bit of themselves in this plan. And really, we, we try to listen as hard as we can to the conversations we have around these, uh, around these tables and in, in, with your community. Because this is not going to happen overnight. This is going to take months and years and decades, perhaps. But so what we're trying to do is kind of synthesize a vision so that folks can start to work collaboratively together not in a confrontational way because fixing downtowns like your village center is complicated work and it's going to take a lot of conversations around uh, around tables like that going forward um, so the process was really iterative you know i think we, we did a frenzy of work and 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 you know got a lot of input and kind of have emerged with some preferred options that we're going to show you here tonight you know this is kind of a sketch plan uh that we left you with a few you know several weeks ago. Um, and this has been refined, and we've actually run this through uh, kind of a step further than I think we were going to initially do because of the, the process with DOT that's coming next. And we've really put you know, down to feet and inches on this plan now to really see what's going to work and you know, kind of looked at curb radius and turning radius and really have, have kind of looked through all of the comments on the various sort of kit of parts that we showed everyone and have tried to pull together at least a preferred scenario, if not a couple options that we think will align best with everyone's uh, kind of wishes and big ideas here. Um, so the, uh, the plan has sort of been framed also around sort of next steps for the overall village, not just with its streets, because the streets have to serve the, whole, the sort of holistic place. And I think a lot of the big ideas that came in during the discussions, we wanted to make sure we were captured in that at least there was a framework or a lattice work for future conversations. And, and also to make sure that the conversations about the street always is framed in, in service of the larger village center. Um, so the first one is really reclaiming the village center for people. I think that's gotta be your charge. That's gotta be everyone's mantra going forward. And that that has a real physical uh, design to it. You know, there are there are real details that we can look to to do that. What this illustrative plan is showing is, is sort of a hypothetical future. 
you know, dec you know, decade, two decades, three decades from now, where you have this interesting uh, mix of village-oriented streets, both a main street, side street, and you have the potential for a, a kind of bookend approach to, to, to the redevelopment of sites that are currently either underutilized because they're kind of auto-oriented or are not in the right form to really support the community that you want to provide uh, here in the village center. So what you see here in this plan is sort of an idea of how over time, when you invest in the streets in the right form, and people want to spend time there, they feel comfortable there, the buildings will react to that. And the private, the private sector will react, react to that, and more value can be created. And what we see when we look at uh, really walkable, really human-scaled village centers, they oftentimes are the most productive places in towns. And productive meaning, if you sort of look at tax revenue per acre, they're the most value added to your community. And, and, and you see that, they're, they're the places that bring the most people in, they have the most sort of interesting architecture at times, and they're the places that people celebrate the, the life of the town. What we're also showing here is a catalyst site, the sort of, you know, what do you do to the north of town that can support the, the village center? And that is a, a kind of multi-generational development plan that I'll go into in a little bit more detail. And when we started to draw this more, it, it, it became clear that you have this sort of access immediately to park space in your village center. And then we'll talk a little bit more about how the village center is also connected to the countryside or, or the sort of, you know, you're out of town very quickly. So this plan had to sort of weave together the sort of natural elements uh, of the overall town of Gray and bring those right into the village center with a, a thick tree canopy and more planting areas and the like. So, and this idea of, of a place for people is not new. You know, this is a map, I think, from 1795. Yeah, I'm reading that right. Um, the oldest map we could find. And, and it was interesting because it says meeting house there. And then later on, you know, some, one, one of the, really one of the old timers in town told me, oh, that was where the meeting house used to be. And then they moved it to where the church is now. And then they rebuilt it. And this idea that this intersection was always where people came to meet. And, that, and this is sort of back to the future moment where we just have to think about how we can, how we can cultivate that spirit again. Because the, the, this, is, this land has been being used for that for, for centuries now. And you see that in the old photographs. You can kind of see the character here of sort of early automobiling happening. But you can still see that there was a mix of uses. There was a mix of building types. You know, there was pedestrians that were sort of traveling through the street. And then you can see in the back there where that monument is, that's where the meeting house used to be. So you have this legacy of tinkering with this intersection over time. And, and I think here's another opportunity for us as, uh, uh, as your community to sort of really sort of knit it back together as a place for people. So when you look at the corner here, um, you know, this is, uh, has too much asphalt. You can kind of just look at it, at, and when we look at, at places for people, the percentage of sort of car space to, 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 to human space, there's always sort of a good balance, and this one is out of balance. Um, and rightfully so, there's trucks that go through there, there's highway traffic, and if you were planning a freeway, that's what it would look like. So I think it's sort of how do we plan this for people now and, and not necessarily as part of the freeway. So what we've tried to do with this design is, is take into account all of the big turning movements that need to happen and make sure the geometry works for those types of vehicles, but slow everything down. And what we find is that you know, when you're in rush hour and everything is, is moving at a crawl's pace, it's because that's the highest capacity those streets have. So what we're trying to do is, whoop. <laughs> I'm not sure, is that me? Yeah, something's on auto there. I see it jumping around the screen. Zoom, we're getting zoom bombed here. Oh, we're being oh, zoom no. bombed, Kyle. Uh, I'm stuck now, too. Yeah. Gosh, that's really unfortunate. There we go. Thank you, Kyle. I will be on the lookout now. Yes. So, uh, the. Let's see, we're, hold on now. 
All right, so when we look at this from above, what we've tried to do in this plan is the same number of lanes exist. So the, the same sort of turning movements are capable. We've just right-sized all of the lane widths and right-sized the sort of geometry so that it puts pedestrians and cyclists more on an equal footing. And that is predicated on a slower moving vehicle speed, which results in, in a small, you know, less than a minute probably to go through the village center from a vehicle standpoint, but it creates an opportunity for a lot more uh, pleasant experience for those of us who want to walk and, and cycle through here. So you can see that sort of realignment. Now there, there's, there's really three big moves that allow us to do this. One, it is sort of thinking about adjusting the right of way, thinking about sort of bringing out the curbs so that we have an attached green, and it's realigning Brown Street um, as well so that we end up spacing those two intersections out a little bit more so that we actually get the sort of geometry uh, to work and we also narrow down the crossing widths so that pedestrians can actually uh, more easily cross the street in a, a more conventional crosswalk. Now, this is also part of the sort of you know, the experience of, uh, of the village center with what, you know, what we were, you know, would affectionately call a main street, but I think those from away might not really consider this a main street. This is sort of very, very much a kind of highway serving retail and, and, and not necessarily the kind of picturesque main street that you would see um, on a postcard. And here we go again. Same person, Kyle. So on the main street here, again, we have the same really issue about an excess of pavement. And if we think about how do we reorganize that pavement, there's a lot of choices. But when we look at great main streets, they really have at least a 50% asphalt to 50% sidewalk, if not greater, so that you actually have this very nice mix between sidewalk space in, for humans and, and space to service that street with, with cars or parked vehicles. Um, so what we've done here is think about how these parcels over time, Need your mic. If, if the street is re-imagined uh, as mute, a main please. street. Excuse me, can you mute, please? We'll, we'll get to questions in a minute. Um, we can see those sites redevelop into a mixed use village center uh, framework. And you have some of those buildings left. You have some nice historic stock of buildings in, in places. And we could see that over time, you might have housing above, or you might have offices above, or you might have different businesses that want to have a mix of uses to, to co-locate in the village center where you know, the streets are, are safe to walk on and, um, and, and shops spill out onto the sidewalk. Um, and that's an environment that you know, when you look at this from above, you can see that there's, there's a lot of unproductive land here for storing cars and a lot of unproductive land here for moving vehicles through your community. So if we can sort of think of differently about the streets, the resulting private sector will respond to that and ideally the compounding value for a community will, will occur over time. And that's, you know, this is sort of envisioning kind of a new main street with beautiful street trees, wide sidewalks, some street parking, some bicycle infrastructure, and the resulting sort of redevelopment of some of those, uh, some of those parcels that might occur. And these paintings are just sort of an impression of what the future might be. And when you look at it at the ground level, it's really about how do you feel as a member of the community walking or biking through or even driving through, you know, where that, you know, at times this might be a more pleasant place to even move your vehicle through. And, and this idea that this, this sort of uh, village center needs to have a spirit and a character to the streets that is aligned better with the values you've told us you want about you know, being for people. And looking down Brown Street here, this street, you know, there's a lot of conversation about this when we're going through the conceptual design, but really it needs to serve the, the, the village in a, in a pretty interesting way. And we think there's an opportunity to sort of 
adjust the alignment at the corner that allows the, uh, the main street intersection uh, and basically the whole sort of block there on 202 to work well. And then there's an opportunity to actually create a new public space on the corner there, which would be sort of a town square or a town plaza. Um, and, you know, and when we look at the other end of Brown Street, similarly, there's the opportunity that, that I think your community has been discussing for a while that you know, we had put out a couple other options initially and ultimately we came, came back to this is the best version for this, which really sort of results in the creation of really two pocket parks you know, and a very nice intersection to cross, uh, you know, to, to, to gain access over to the library and the, the sort of a gateway into the village center. And I think this is an interesting spot when you come down the hill as well, because it, it, you know, it sort of induces more vehicle sort of acceleration just by the nature of the geometry. And I think by, by really necking this down and kind of reorienting some of the land that is already in the right of way and then working with the church, you know, you can really have a, an iconic sort of gateway to, um, to the village as you come in and uh, and there you see the sort of new parks that can, can occur and, and uh, possibly a new monument that sort of celebrates this side of the entrance to the village. So we're looking more at more detail over at, at, at Collie Hill and how this site, because it's quite large and it's, and it's very adjacent to the village center. So how can this serve the, the goals you've set out for the village as well as its streets. And I think in, in two ways, you know, as it looks at people's one, you could put more people here. You know, it's very clear that this, this area could be used for housing or, or, or a mix of uses, but it, because of the sort of distance to the village center, it really is a walkable site. You know, if you do this properly, this would be in people living in town, right in the village center. And I think the second part of that is it also needs to be a gateway. As you kind of come into town, these two roads kind of converge in one of those very interesting intersections we see throughout Maine. So what we're seeing, and DOT is doing this in other communities, is sort of, create, sort of creating that pinch point and just bending one of those legs. So someone has to take a real right-hand or left-hand turn. And I think in this plan we're looking at you know, sort of making the sort of, you know, one of those legs really turn into the, the two, Route 202. And then you can see how that could knit into another series of really village streets with, with smaller blocks that have uh, a mix of housing types built on them. That would be within really a three, four minute walk into the village center. And what we see here is that that sort of suggests a, a, a big, big idea, sort of other big goal for, for the Village Center is how do you create a multi-generational community? And I think this is what we saw a lot of the discussion around is, is sort of the opportunities between both school age kids and aging seniors and sort of this sort of uh, these two sections of the demographic, both wanting to be in the Village Center, both want to be walking in the Village Center. And how can we kind of bring that sort of whole spectrum uh, of life together. And I think one of it is sort of the pro providing sort of an opportunity for people to remain in your community. And I think as we did a series of sketches for, for this, the gateway site here, it became apparent that, you know, it might be great to have another ball field, but it might be better to have more housing. And more housing that's multi-generational and serving a variety of different uh, uh, types of folks who want to live in Gray or live in the Village Center. And you know, looking at that same site, you could fit in a, a, a lot of different types of homes. And what this is showing is, is uh, the, the, I could kind of take you through the colors, but the light, the light orange is a, a kind of center core building that might have an elevator. So you know, folks who want to uh, not go upstairs or have mobility reasons or, or, you know, pushing a baby carriage, have elevator service. The orange buildings are, are could be sort of small multifamilies that might have an elevator or might just be walk-ups. The sort of lighter tan buildings are just walk-ups, so those, those don't have as much expense to construct, so therefore they can hit a different price point at the rent or sale price. And then what you're seeing is some smaller infill buildings, which are townhomes or duplexes, or even sort of apartment 
homes where it's a large sort of captain's house or farmhouse that might be three or four units. So you can see the potential for this site to really create a, 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 a several blocks of, of multi-generational housing. And what we've done is do, done this in a way that the parking is integrated into the buildings or integrated into the streetscape. So what you're not seeing is a sea of parking lot. You know, this is really an in-town, uh, in the village living. And what results is you have a series of small courtyards and, and pocket parks and possibly some uh, community amenities, you know, sports facilities or the like uh, on the north there. Um, so the potential for that site also s starts to suggest this third goal, which is really how do you strengthen and connect the neighborhoods? You know, there are already folks who might consider themselves living in the village center that fear for their life to walk in or ride their bike in, into the village center. So it's this idea of kind of knitting back together those neighborhoods or those homes that are already in the village. And how do we connect those places that are both really a five to seven minute walk away as well as to the sort of farther afield that might be a 15 minute bike ride away. So, you know, as we talk to folks, we kind of, you know, four of these places emerged as sort of real priority centers. And the idea that really from, you know, it's a very compact geography that you might not really realize unless you went out there and walked it. But from one end of the purple to the other is really only a, a, a 10 minute walk. You know, from center to edge is a five minute. So, you know, when you look at that, that's really a sort of well, uh, well choreographed village center. You know, that's what we see all over the region is these sort of five minute sort of neighborhood sort of walking distances. So what we've been seeing in a lot of communities is this idea of, you know, and I think this is sort of a number of trends coming together, also exacerbated by COVID and the idea that you want to have proximity to all your services locally. And you want to kind of be able to, uh, it, really this 15 minute concept is that if you live in a village and it's a well-functioning town, you should be able to do a lot of things within a 15 minute walk, bike, or drive of your home. And I think that's something to sort of look at as you think about the, the village center as the heart of your community. And we've seen this happen in a lot of places that are far less uh, uh, rooted in history of community like New England. This is in Texas, you know, where they started to do some incremental streetscape improvements in, in this neighborhood, and no one walked here. But then when they started to invest in their streets, these very interesting local serving shops and restaurants started popping up and people got out of their cars and walked there. So if Texas can do it, we can do it here in Gray. And we see this, what, what we're so sort of uh, both cherish these buildings, but also, you know, sort of we forget how special it is that we in New England have these places that are walkable and have this mix of uses and have these, you know, pleasant village centers. And I think that's where we just have to go back and look at those places, measure them, and they've been there for hundreds of years and working. So we just need to kind of, you know, relearn these, these tools. And then the idea of knitting community together and this idea that there are these, you know, Activities that happen in community that you have to connect back together, the, the shopping, the market day, the, 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 the seasons. Like how can these larger institutions be connected to downtown in a, in a more compelling way? And this comes to sort of the big fourth goal here, which is, you know, it all comes down to the local economy. You know, you, you have a sort of commerce center here. You have vehicles traveling by you know, so there, there's, an, there's, a, there's an economic uh, opportunity here if done properly. And you, you're sort of in a regional economy that is sort of an, at an interesting place right now as far as housing and as far as job access. So we wanted to kind of not crush everyone's thinking around this, but just sort of start small. And this, you know, this is what we call the kind of incremental retail toolkit. So this on the left-hand side, you know, everyone always wants a farmer's market. You know, it's this idea of, oh, well, there's a flea market or there's a night market. It starts with tents. You know, and then as you ratchet it up, you might get food trucks. And then from food trucks, you get these trailers, which might be semi-permanent. They might not go anywhere, you know, and they have sort of a little more infrastructure. And then we see, we're seeing this now, the center one, what we call micro-retail or the pods. We're seeing this in a number of communities where they're actually installing things meant to be there for a year or two, they might have plumbing, and they're still very low cost and very small, but they're semi-permanent. 
And this is being successful in place where it's bringing retail at a price point that allows these small interesting shops or these interesting businesses to get going. And that, that creates this local experience that makes people want to go to places and, and, and not just shop on Amazon. And then when we see that really get going, you know, you start to get brick and mortar, mortar stores, small retail or these live work, or you get these new mixed use buildings. So this is a way to kind of incrementally incubate a successful local retail and local sort of business economy. And you have lots of land to do this. Um, and we see this happening all, all over New England and sort of, you know, and, and at every, every point of the season. And I think that's sort of the driving thing I wanna uh, kind of land on with this slide is that winter is not a time when your downtown needs to just close up shop. And I think, you know, we've been talking to a lot of main downtowns recently and, and I think it's just requiring us to be creative. And I think the idea of, uh, of what happens in the winter is a, is a way to bring the community together. And then ultimately, you want to have new investment happen. And, and these are an example of the sort of very small business incubator. This is a 20 foot deep building that replaced a parking stall. So this, you know, and they're chopped up into very small shops that incubate new businesses. And if these businesses are successful in this town center, they move from one of these small shops into a bigger retail space. And they might do that two or three times over the life of their business. So these small, these small buildings and, and kind of how you incubate local retail really has to do with the size of the space and the price point and then how it interfaces with the street, how you bring community together because people want to actually experience these things together. And this gets into the sort of big idea number five, which is how do you bring this all together? There has to be a network. The streets are the sort of main part of the network, but you have paths and trails and, and sort of this connective tissue that the streets have to be a part of and have to sort of knit back together. So this is priorities around sidewalks, priorities around trails. And then how that both works for all age groups, works for all sort of seasons. And then I think what going back to sort of the beginning is, you know, you have this access to the countryside and this sort of interesting mix of sort of places for a community where people can hang out and gather in the village center and then you can take a brisk walk or bike ride out to the countryside and experience the sort of, whether it's agrarian in nature or not, you have this great dynamic that not a lot of places uh, have the potential to really cherish like you do here in Gray. So just real quick, because I know I'm going, I'm going a bit long, um, this comes down to the streets. And I have a lot of details on how Main Street should be organized, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of, of sort of the options where you have, you know, this option has a parking lane with, with some cycle tracks. This option has two parking lanes, but no cycle tracks. So you have some options still left uh, and, and plenty of room for, for them to be accommodated. You know, and, and when we look at this, it's sort of, you know, you have to have a conversation about how you want to integrate cycling into your community to really decide some of these, how do you want to use these widths? And we're seeing a lot of communities invest in very heavy duty bicycle infrastructure because what we've seen is that the cycling, cycling will increase when good infrastructure is in place. And it just creates that sa safe experience so that those that are less comfortable will then ride. And we're seeing this not just in New England cities, but we're seeing this in small towns throughout the Midwest as well. This is uh, Carmel, Indiana. Uh, you know, so this idea of, of sort of bicycling as part of your community's DNA and part of the way you get around, it, more and more communities are coming to that, that conclusion as well. So we've included some diagrams about like how this space should be used. And this is the existing condition. Um, and this is, you know, this is sort of the preferred condition where we have some dedicated cycling space and, and a parking lane, two travel lanes, which we've just right-sized all the space. You know, we're not increasing the right-of-way width at all here. And then here's a, here's a second option where, you know, it might be where you, you know, on, on one or two blocks, you really want to maximize the sort of potential for street parking to service the, the downtown businesses. So you can see here the existing condition next to the prefer, preferred uh, design. Um, so really, you know, look at the, the, the amount of orange on the screen. That's really what we're just talking about, is reallocating that, that orange area. 
Then another example here, just to sort of you know talk a little bit more about about Yarmouth Road is, you know, Yarmouth has this interesting dynamic because of uh, the right of way and the sort of fences and how some of the buildings interact with it. So we sort of looked at it in two ways, saying you know how can we just right size the the road to slow travel uh, to sort of support the kind of human oriented needs of the village center. And this one is really looking at just sort of right sizing the travel lanes, which brings out the potential to add street trees and sort of planting space with some, some good sidewalks. And then another option at times might be where you could actually take advantage of the full right of way width and, and, and add a parking lane, which could become a turn lane if needed uh, at the intersection. Um, so this is its current condition, which we have sort of this fuzzy edge here with the, the, the right of way and some of the fences and, and, and other other uh, structures. Um, so this is the preferred design, which we really integrate good sidewalks, good street trees, and just right size the travel lanes to, to kind of calm traffic down. And then this one takes full advantage of the right of way, which might be sort of a puzzle with certain you know, properties abutting this, but this, this adds that parking lane in. Um, and then you can see there side by side the kind of current condition with proposed. This is not much of a change, but I think the important piece here is really getting that landscaping in and then providing that space for the pedestrian that is kind of buffered by that landscaping. Um, it could be a fabulous sort of you know, tree lined in, in, in the village center street. And, and just to remind you, because you know, a lot of this is very technical, but it comes back to just people being able to have a good time sitting on a street, walking on a street, walking on a street. So what we're proposing you do next uh, is really try some of this. You know, there's this idea of quick builds, this idea of getting out there and trying some of this. And we see a lot of communities doing this, where this was a, used to be a parking lot, now it's a plaza. Uh, and we're seeing this in, in, in really robust ways, and this is a way to kind of start to build a coalition of people that will help you with the conversation with DOT. Um, and really to celebrate this idea that you want to rebuild your streets in your village center. And program it in what we call a better block. Go out there and, you know, we've shown you some pictures and some renderings of this and some paintings of this, but go out there in the real world and try it on a couple hundred feet, you know, one block of your village center. And this is, you know, we've seen this throughout the U.S. and internationally now. People are going out there and saying, on this block, we're going to temporarily build what we think the future will be. And this might happen over the course of a weekend. And this brings together the opportunity to really try things in the real world and to see how the, uh, the dynamics of, of the traffic and the situations in, the, in, your down, in your village center can really result from these improvements. So we've done this with a number of main communities. This is a pop-up skateboard park in, in downtown Freeport. Um, and, and this is a way to move this plan forward into the real world and not let it sit on the shelf. Um, so I really hope that um, you know, this was informative, and I know there's a lot of technical stuff there, so hopefully we have a little time for questions. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, and just for those watching at home, um, we did have a, and I'll speak about this a little bit more later in the meeting, but we did have our um, workshop with the DOT, um, and we have shared the draft plan with them, okay. so that you're aware of that. I'm sure Vanessa filled you yeah. in. Um, and we're able to talk about some of the big points of, uh, and when I mean points, I mean points on the road uh, that are going to cause the uh, most complications. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so um, I know that uh, Nate is working on setting up some meetings uh, with the subgroup, including the principal group um, and staff um, and the DOT to start working through some of those issues. Um, one other thing I will mention is that Dan had suggested in the meeting and everyone agreed that the DOT really needs to provide a timeline for us um, and, and identify um, trigger points or points that um, we need to have specific tasks completed by to stay on that timeline. So hopefully that will be coming soon as well. Um, so we'll st open this up to the council if there's specific feedback or questions on any of the material. Um, I think we're not looking to dive into all of the technical details because as part of that uh, working group with the DOT we're going to work through some options um, but if there's any large uh, items or uh, feedback that you'd like to provide I think that would be helpful um, anyone want to go Dan I'll jump in okay. um, I, I think one of the things that um, 
you know, it isn't, certainly isn't rocket science, but the try before you buy idea of, you know, implementing some of the um, changes that we can do in very real time for practically no money, um, I think is, is a great way to continue the conversation in the community and, and also get some real feedback as mm -hmm. to how those changes would work. Um, you know, we've dabbled that a little bit ourselves with the, you know, temporarily striping Hancock Street to change the traffic on that road. This really ramps it up quite a bit more. But I think the thing it does is there are other places outside the downtown area that either have congestion issues or where we also find that maybe we don't have the ratio between people and cars quite right. And it would be really easy for us to extend this to, to those places, too. So, I mean, I think one spinoff already um, from your suggestions is that outside of, you know, the bailiwick of this conversation, I think we can, we can make this available to folks in town and really give the people in those other neighborhoods around town that have some ideas, some tools to use to, to try out some ideas there, too. So I think one of the benefits for me is just how this has kind of blossomed as a conversation in, in the community. And so I really, I really thank you for that. I think you've been instrumental in helping us take some of the raw feelings and ideas that individuals have and making them more concrete so that we can actually have the conversation. So there is a lot to digest here, but I, I really do uh, appreciate your efforts on our behalf for, for those reasons. Great, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, Krista? Yeah, um, I, I, this was really informative and um, I think beneficial, particularly seeing the visuals, um, the transition from the samples people were putting stickers on and what that really looks like for our specific intersections. Um, and I was really also pleased to see that a lot of the priorities you identified really mirrored um, the um, priorities in our comprehensive plan. Um, so I think not only is that a good alignment as we continue to make policies and um, infrastructure plans, but it, it also just reinforces that the community is still feeling the same way as they were two years ago when we finished that plan. Mm -hmm. Um, so that that was nice to see, and it's it's good to know we're all kind of on the same page as we work towards those improvements. So. Marty, mm -hmm. uh, yes, I like this plan, especially when I see that it's going to force the big vehicles to stay on the interstate. <laughs> Please, I think um, what I love hearing, um, especially folks and personally I've lived overseas in Europe and the coolest thing about living there was having the place or your place of um, where you're living you get to live work eat play all within walking distance of your flat or all within walking distance of um, your house and there was this feeling with the, the town square where it was the place to be and it was to, it's where you went to go do things. And I think with this comp plan, uh, with alignment with the comp plan, this will give the folks of Gray um, a little extra step on, on where to go to be a community. And I think that was um, a, really, a really great idea to bring everyone together. I don't think that happens enough now. I mean, being semi-new to, well, four or five years now here in, in the town, um, I'm always looking for something to do, like D.C., for example. You know, you can go down downtown D.C., everything's free, you get the museums, the monuments, everyone's running, walking. Um, I think it's it's what Gray needs, and I think the most important part here, I think I can speak for a bunch of folks, is uh, the safety in the area, I think, is is top on the list. So the... the the point that you brought all that together with safety in mind, with the economic development as well, is going to help the town greatly, and I think it's long overdue. So thank you. Great, thanks. I want to mirror all that. Um, I think I found uh, what was interesting um, was what you said earlier, was that most of the people that have participated, we were 
really close. Like everyone, there was such a consensus, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't always happening happen with uh, charrettes or, or village uh, or forums. We've had forums before that haven't quite brought everyone together. Um, I agree with Dan. We've heard a lot of this for many, for those of us who've lived here a very long time. Um, we've been talking about it for a really long time. And to be able to take what people are saying and translate that into actionable visuals is, was really helpful. And I think that helped feed that additional feedback. Um, I want to thank you for listening um, and on the Hancock Brown Street connection. So I, I do think this is better than the first proposal. Um, although I didn't, I never really thought of the way um, the first proposal had that uh, green in the center, and that's kind of a unique, unique way of, to think about green space. I hadn't thought of it that way, but I think this much, works much better, uh, especially in considering the, the fact that we're trying to build those networks of streets, which mm -hmm. is a great concept mm -hmm. as well. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is that obviously, as you already said, this isn't going to happen next year. <laughs> We do have, um, we are lucky to have um, two very large infrastructure projects in the pipeline. So Route 115, Yarmouth Road, and Main Street will happen in the next three to five years. Both hopefully will be completed by that time. So a lot of this will happen rather quickly. But other parts of it probably will take a little bit longer. And then, of course, redevelopment and bringing in development will take much longer. Uh, depending on um, whether we can find partners. Um, a couple of minor issues or comments I want to make is just to remind everyone that there is a house on that Collie Hill Road um, that has a driveway that is very close to that intersection. So as you guys work through that with the DOT, we need to just make sure that that uh, resident um, can still get in and out of their house. <laughs> um, so we want to make sure we're aware of that. Um, the field that is currently, I believe, under J, on the plan um, that is on town owned property um, but the field um, and the fence and the concession stand and the parking doesn't all fit on town property there is a conservation or recreational covenant on that piece of property so it may um, one of the items when we uh, bought the village gateway was to move a field over there um, as well as potentially relocate a field from the panel um, footprint so it's not adding additional fields to that property, it's relocating fields that exist in the village. So right, right. perhaps you know there might be a little bit more fields on the village gateway property, but then that frees that piece of property up for potential housing, for example. So we might switch a couple things around. Right, right. Um, so I just wanna kind of put that out there for those that were involved in the village gateway, a lot of, um, very happy a lot of voters came out and approved the purchase of that property understanding that there might be some green space on that so just because it shows is all housing doesn't mean that's what's going to actually end up happening exactly with that property but um, so I wanted to make that point um, and then I think in our MDOT meeting um, Carlos had brought up the potential of having a turning lane on Brown Street and then during that meeting he rethought that maybe that wouldn't wasn't the best approach so I did want to bring that forward because um, I do really I think one of the best things about your plan my favorite thing about the plan is actually making those intersections be traditional four-way intersections which they are not right now they're a sea of space and concrete and I think half the time we see people going down the wrong way or making inappropriate turns or speeding through or not understanding how to do a left on left turn is because they're in this sea of asphalt and they and they just panic or don't know what yeah there you go they, i, I no mean direction. if you're entering this and you aren't familiar there's just no way to understand where you're supposed to be going um, obviously the overhead utilities and the signage doesn't really help um, so I love the, the fact that we're going to try to shrink that and make it a more traditional. Um, in that DOT meeting, I mentioned um, that we were out in the Midwest recently and very populated area, lots of traffic, and the street lights went down. But it was a traditional four-way stop, so everyone just knew what to do. They all just started doing every other, and, and it just worked fine. When our, we lose our street lights in that intersection, it's calamity. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and I'm glad you brought up that uh, that town in the Indiana because we were in Coralville in Iowa, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is an amazing town. Every single street has bike lanes, sidewalks, streetscapes. Half of them don't even have street lights. They're four ways with stops, and it's a lot of and it just it works. It all works. And by the way, all their utilities, the entire almost the entire town is underground. So it's really quite lovely. Um, so that was kind of my big points, but um, I want to applaud you. I think you've done a great job. Um, I think we can handle this all together. those points. Thank you so. very much. <laughs> That'd be great if you could. Um, and I think um, I would also like to take the time to once again and thank the staff for supporting the principal group's effort. Um, in particular, I think Doug is here. Um, um, John, um, Kyle, I'm going to miss some people, Mo, Kristen, Kristen Anthony, who all pulled together the visioning sessions, in particular the block party, which was a huge success, um, and um, appreciate that effort because without that effort we wouldn't have gotten so much feedback from the residents. So. Yeah, it, it's a lot of work, but your community yes. came together. So I really hope I really hope this is a tool you all can use to, to move the conversation with DOT forward. So Great. looking forward to wrapping it up and thank you all. This thank has been a lot of much. a lot of fun, thank really, you. really exciting. Right. Anne, are you moving into position to make a comment or are you just moving so you could see? Um, I, I You'll have to stand up to the yeah, mic I, now. I Here, let me uh, yeah. for huh? presentation. Huh? Anne Gass, resident of two thirty two uh, no, North Raymond so Road. Easy. I just want to piggyback on what Russ said about um, how making investments in the streets and sidewalks can help to attract more business development and, and change. And I just want to tell, you know, tell a quick story about the Village Area Loop Trail, which um, has a, when we extended or rebuilt the segment from the end of Hancock Street to the plaza, initially, uh, on a rainy days like the last couple of days here, uh, it you know the the walkers would get dumped into a, a lake, a, you know a, a large pond because the drainage had never been properly built in that plaza. And um, uh, but we rebuilt the the link there, and the plaza owner was really happy with that. A new owner bought the former White's Q and gutted it, fixed it up, and it rented it to Birchwood Brewery. And then the plaza owner, with no pressure from the town whatsoever, uh, went ahead and, and fixed the drainage and repaved that section of the plaza. So it went from being a colossal kind of no man's land and very unattractive to being a, a, a much more attractive place. Um, they landscaped the end of the, um, of the link. Uh, that was, again, a, a, a voluntary decision on the part of the plaza owner. And, uh, it, and initially, for the first two or three years, it was the home to the Gray Farmers Market. So that's how community development happens, that kind of incremental change over time, and the contributions of the private and the public sectors, um, that's, that's how it works. And that was a beautiful example of it. So I was glad to hear you say that, Russ. Thank you, Ann. Chief, you had your hand up. And Dan did point out we normally don't uh, allow a public comic or have a public hearing for presentations, but um, this is the village visioning, and so I'm going to defer to allow public comment. Hi, I'm Kurt, the public, public safety director in the town of Gray. Um, I really like this plan, and I like the, the goals of it. The only thing that concerns me is emergency apparatus access through the town. If, um, if the lanes are 11 feet wide, um, trucks average 11 feet wide. And I know we want to keep the trail tracks up, but we still need to get through to like the new Avesta housing project. And that's really the best way for us to get up um, Route 100 or down to Yarmouth Road. So we just need to keep that in mind. I'm sure there's ways around it. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. And actually, it has come up. I yeah. think yeah. several times, Chief, okay. but it's always a good reminder. The yes. Plow that's trucks are right. wider than your fire engines. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yes. Any other comments or questions? Seeing any, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And we'll be having a lot more, yeah, any more conversations. Yeah. <laughs>